Okay, so I'm in the middle of recording this video and I think I'm making it like way too complicated. So basically what we're doing is creating an app where you can go in and search for something that you wanna read the news on. Let's say you were interested in pandas lately. So you wanna read all the news articles that exist about pandas. So you type in pandas and then there you have it. You get like a list of news articles that has anything to do with pandas. The specific API is a container that holds all possible articles and if you type in Panda, you can like filter through basically this container and say, okay, here are the articles on Panda Bears. We have our API key. This is going to be our get URL and this is what we're going to be getting back. And then the articles and that, as you can see, is an array of objects. Each object item within this array is a separate article. So as you can tell, there's like all those 5,000 returns are 5,000 articles. You wanna make sure that you know what you're designing. The idea is just to give yourself and possibly other people that you're working with a visual representation of what you will be doing. Okay, so as you can see, the first thing we did was designed a very rough draft of what the user would see when it interacts with your app. So the flowchart that I'm showing you guys breaks down the app into like step-by-step. Step. I kind of broke it up into three parts. The HTML JavaScript news API, right? Which is the API that we're gonna be using. So if you can tell, HTML is very similar to this right here. You have input, button, results. Input, button, results. This and this is what goes on between the moments that you click submit and the results are displayed. That's where JavaScript comes in. You're telling the computer exactly what to do when the submit button is clicked. On the HTML on the user side, that your user is going to type in something that they're interested in. So in this case, earthquakes. Once they have their search term in here, they're going to click on the submit button. Submit. Okay. They expect to see these results almost instantaneously, but once you click submit button, all these things happen. So you click on the submit button, the submit button function is activated. And it first, what it does is it collects the input values of this input field right here. Cool. Once it has those input fields, it can say, Hey, go call this function right here that calls to the API. This function up here has one job and one job only. Its purpose is to send a get request to the news API. The news API says, cool, I know exactly where to take you. It takes you to this result. So that endpoint says, cool, we have what we've got. Now you have all the information you need to be able to display the results. The display results function is activated and it is holding this entire object. Now I want you to go back into that JSON data here and give me under articles, the value of the title, the value of the description and the value of the URL. You can append those things to the HTML. So you can just be like, all right, JavaScript, now we have everything we've need. I just need you to fill in the gaps and like display this as an H3, a paragraph, a tag, and you're going to use specifically these values. So once we have that and everything plugged in, this is cool. You're telling me to display this HTML with all this specific data back onto your browser and ta-da, your user is happy to get the results that I asked for. First, I'm gonna start with the HTML and basically build this out. Now, if I click run, you should see exactly what we just built. And that's where we wanna jump into the JavaScript file. So JavaScript, this is where this wireframe I think comes in handy quite a bit. So we're gonna have function. What function called API, okay? And then we have a function that is with submit click. Cool. And then we have a function that displays this. So what comes first? What are we dealing with first? Well, you wanna get right here, right? You click on submit. You wanna listen for that submit button being clicked and collect the value. All right, the first thing we wanna do is listen for this button being clicked. So we're gonna use jQuery 
so we're going to do submit and then create a function listening for an event apart from that we have to call submit button and this basically says whenever the form loads start with this function right here but you need something to start it off so now when we run it i click enter an alert pops up saying hey there so you know that everything works when it submits what do we want to happen from here we know that we want it to collect the value of the input field we're going to target that input field using jquery we're going to set it to a variable so you can use it over and over again you can check it and see if it works so we run it and then you say world enter world so that's the second thing that our submit button does is collect the input values and we've set it to a variable so we can use it this leads us to creating a call to the api so we're going to call this function and pass it that input value so we're going to pass it input value because it needs this information to access those certain endpoints call api and we're going to pass an input value we're going to run it testing enter connection made awesome so next what we're going to do is use the fetch call to call to this api so if you see here we've passed it into this function we're basically replacing this query with whatever was input by the user and it's going to result all of this so you're going to make a fetch request to a specific uri which we have and you're going to change the endpoints so in this case this query endpoint from bitcoin you're going to change it to whatever the user input here so if the user wants to learn about cakes in the news then that endpoint is going to be passed into this query right here it's a little confusing i know so this function says fetch this url which like i said i copied from here your api key is obviously going to be different it's going to be the one that you signed up with we're going to change this this input value in order to have that replace this query all you have to do is use a template literal this isn't going to work just like that in order for it to read this as a proper value you need to use tactics and voila this now says you're going to make a request to this url and i want to search for everything in your database but i want to search specifically for what the user is looking for and here's my key so i can have access to it that's all it is cool and one way to test to see if your api key works if this is going to work is to literally copy this url in your browser paste it and then instead of input value you're going to change it to earthquakes or whatever topic you want and you'll you should see an object with an array of other objects. Um, so now you kind of see this right here is equivalent to this right here. It's just, this is organized and neat and easy for us to read. And this is not easy. All right, and you use that using a fetch request. Then what do you want to happen? Well, we can use then. I want to make sure that this comes back to me, that my response from this comes back to me in a JSON format. I'm going to just do JSON. You can then take that new response, and this new response is basically just this in the JSON format. And now you can pass that information, this database right here, and say, cool, I'm ready to pass this information into the display results function. So you're just going to call display results. You're going to give it a new response. And this basically just says, cool, we have everything we need. And now the display results can use the information to access specific things like the URL. And as a precaution, we want to make sure that we also include a catch. To make sure that if there's an error, I want it to return and print out my error. And that, my friends, is the hardest thing to understand. So let's run it. And then again, let's do earthquakes, enter, 
it's not very hard. Oh, okay. So did you see that? Here, my function is called displays results. And here I was calling display results. So I'm gonna actually change my function name to display results. And now it should have the same name, meaning that line four actually called the function display results. I'm gonna go back and look at our wireframe. So just to walk you through this one more time, you're gonna get sick of looking at this, but I think it's helpful. So you have your HTML, right? You have the input field, which is there here. Then you have your submit button, which is this right here. And then once you click on the submit button, two things happen. One, you collect the values of the input field, and two, you display the results, right? So one, on the submit button, you listen for that click. Two, you get the value of the input field, and then three, you display the results. But in order to display the results, you need to access the API. So you call on this function, call API. And you pass it that value. You fetch to the URI with, at that endpoint, and you have your key. On line four, you're gonna call the display results function and pass it the new response. Okay, finally, we've made it to the display results function. So what happens here? If, you, if we look at our wireframe, then we just have to do two things. We have to access the exact points that we want to on the API. So obviously we don't want all this information showing and we have to display it onto the DOM. So let's start here. First, you wanna access an object. And if you're stuck here, like I was, go check out some links here about accessing nested arrays and objects. So again, we're here right now, the display results, and we want to access that nested JSON object. So if you look JSON here, we're accessing this object and we've named that object that we have displaying only one result, as you can see, page size one, um, we've named it new response. So we're gonna give that new response, that object that we have into display results right here. And to see what we're getting back, we're gonna print it out here. And so I'm gonna run that and type in Bitcoin and click enter. And now on our console log, you should see Bitcoin is being printed out because I'm printing it out right here. But everything after that is our new response because I've told it, hey, just give me back one article about our input value. And our input value in this case was Bitcoin. So we have our one result here. So now what we wanna do is set a variable named title and we're going to set that and access the title of our article which is right here title so let title equal this and we're going to print that title and if you see here it's the same as this title in here we've basically taken out or access or dove in divin in dove in dived we dove into this object and got the value for the title and then return just that. So now we can go ahead and move on to the next thing, which is create an HTML after we've done all of this and have it displayed in our results here. Um, so we're gonna test it out with a title and then we can add things like the URL. So how do we append the HTML? So what we're gonna need to do is go back to our HTML file and create a space where we can add things to. So I'm going to go back into HTML and under my form, I'm going to say div. I'm going to give it a class of results. All we have to do is target the div we just created. I'm going to say at the results, you're going to append or add HTML. But in order to use these, we're going to use backticks. So we've got our backticks in place and now we can just add HTML as if we were adding it to our HTML file. And I can say H3 and then add that title that we created, close it. And you should see when I run it, Bitcoin, enter oh, right here. And bam, you've got it. It's happening. It's working. You click enter and bam. Ooh, this brings up a good point. So you notice how I'm adding to this and it just adds down here. In order to have these disappear, all you have to do before you append it is go ahead and, and empty it. So empty it out and, empty. and that should empty it. So now when you search several things, cheese, enter, and then volcano, enter, it replaces it instead of um, adding to it. It will pop up in your mock interview. So if 
you need practice or if you're confused about a part, I hope this helps. And if you have questions, definitely just like leave them down below and I'll try to answer them for you because it was confusing. Like this part took me a long time to really understand.